Hello, SlowConf, Kit Merker here from Noble9, and I want to talk to you about the Slow DLC, the SLO development lifecycle. As you probably know, lots of companies are trying to adopt SLOs. We just did a survey of over 300 engineers that work in the observability space, and over 80% of them said they plan to use SLOs more. Um, and I highly recommend you check out the survey for more interesting details. But if everybody's trying to do SLOs, we know that in reality, it's, there's a lot of other things going on. People are busy juggling their operations and responding to incidents to really use SLOs. And even though some of us are all big advocates for SLOs, we have to go around and sell the idea, build the plan, uh, make people uh, understand all the acronyms and concepts and error budgets in order to adopt SLOs. And that's not necessarily easy. So a bunch of us have been working on this. And I luckily in my job, I get to work with lots of cool companies, both as customers and partners. And a lot of us were talking about how to build a better process for SLOs. And this group of companies got together and we built a little working group and we created something called the SLO DLC, which is now live on slowdlc.com. It's an open source methodology uh, that includes a handbook, examples and templates for building SLOs. Um, we even created a cool logo, which is a figure nine. And uh, I was told that figure nines didn't exist, but there you go, we proved them wrong. So you can use the slow DLC to improve your, the rollout of SLOs across your organization. Here's the detailed overview of how the slow DLC works. And I'm gonna briefly touch on each of the different boxes in this template for you, and then encourage you to go check out uh, more details on the website. We actually created a slow DLC handbook. It's available on slowdlc.com that walks through this in detail. So definitely recommend checking that out and uh, learning how to, the slow DLC uh, works. The first phase is the initiate phase. This is where we figure out why are we doing SLOs in the first place and get the business bought in. We wanna create a short document so that anybody who asks you, why are we doing SLOs can go look at it and you don't have to explain it over and over again. Then we wanna find the stakeholders for SLOs. First, we have to understand who our users are and what they care about, who the business stakeholders are and what they care about to run the business effectively, and the team that's gonna be responsible, who have their own concerns, like you know having sanity and not having to work weekends. Um, we wanna figure out who the SLO team is, who are the uh, different roles and stakeholders that will actually drive the SLO initiative and make sure that it comes together. And if we start with the why, we can understand uh, the desired outcome and we have a higher chance of actually meeting the goals um, that we set out to do. We created a template for this called the business case worksheet that's available on slowdlc.com to make it easier for you to get started building this document. After the initiate phase, we do service discovery. The discovery phase is where we try to understand what the services uh, need to do and uh, make it structured, a structured process for asking the right questions so we get good SLOs. Um, what are users trying to do with your service now? What are the user journeys and what do they expect? Um, they may have explicit expectations like an SLA, or they might have implicit expectations you don't even know about based on how other products work in the market and their own, um, their own experiences. Then we wanna identify our end-to-end -end, uh, goals, the internal goals, meaning the services that we are responsible for, and then the external or dependency goals. Once we understand that, that gives us a clearer picture of the risks and the needs of the service and where to focus our energy. Um, once we understand how the service, uh, how it should work, we need to understand how it actually works today. So we, we encourage people to look at recent outages and look at the data that's available. They give us a picture of how the system works uh, currently and how we expect it to work in the future. We created a discovery worksheet, which is part of Slow DLC. It's available on slowdlc.com, so check that out too. Uh, once we've gone through discovery, then we can move to design. And this is where we actually um, take what we've learned about the service and try to build SLOs for it. Um, the first step is to understand where the data lives. Uh, you may wish to have uh, data about everything, but there's a reality to the data. And it probably lives in multiple places if you're building end-to-end -end SLOs in particular. So think about how you can use logs, traces, um, other forms of metrics, as well as perhaps transactional data um, to get that clear picture about the user journey and its behavior over time. Once we have the data uh, figured out, then we want to figure out what SLO is possible today. What can we achieve based on the current risk and design of the system? Um, and to do this, we encourage risk analysis uh, of the service. Then we can think about where we want to be. What's our aspiration? It's not 100%, but if we built a reliability roadmap and made some investments, where can we get the service to be that would actually make business sense and also support the users and our team's need uh, to uh, have sanity? And then finally, defining the time windows that we'll use to make operational decisions, what thresholds will be defined to take action to defend the service from potential downtime. This is an important step in designing the SLOs for a service. We created a slow worksheet that gives you a picture of availability and latency. Now I've been using this worksheet for the last couple of years as part of the SLO boot camps. What's cool about it is it gives us a very simple way in one quick view to see availability and latency for a particular service. On the latency side, we define the start and stop 
for the, the SLO. And we also can define um, the different uh, percentile latency goals, give it friendly labels, and also what action we want to take on the SLO when it's violated, which is really valuable. I want to give a shout out to the Google Siri risk assessment sheet. I've been using this for years uh, as part of my SLO boot camps and other SLO work I've done. It's really useful for defining the achievable uh, achievable SLOs for a service, as well as building a reliability roadmap and uh, understanding what's aspirational for a service. Liz gives you a really clear risk model for our services. So definitely check that out. It works great with the slow DLC. Uh, after we go through the design phase, we get to implementation. Now, this is where you have to you know, actually turn it into a real system. Now, what's cool with the slow DLC is we made it implementation agnostic. So you don't have to be using a particular SLO platform in order to use slow DLC. No matter what you're using, uh, whether it's homegrown or off the shelf, you can use slow DLC as a way to get there. Um, the first thing to think about is we took those SLI data from before. Where did the data live? Now we need to turn it into real queries. Um, maybe you have a single query. Maybe you have a good query and a total query so we can get a ratio. Uh, maybe you have queries across multiple systems that you need to pull together to create SLOs across multiple data sources. But that's the first step is to define what are the actual queries we we'll use for the SLI. Then we want to share the definition of SLOs. Now, I'll give a shameless plug for OpenSLO, which is an open source project uh, that we use to define SLOs in YAML. Um, lots of companies are using this, and it's a really cool uh, standard. But in some way, you need to define the SLOs and publish them to someone. And you also need to put them up in charts and graphs. Um, people want to see what SLOs look like. They want to see how well you're burning down the reliability, how well the SLI is translating into an SLO and error budgets and burn rates. You got to put the graph somewhere. So you need to define that definition in the implementation phase. And then finally, how will we actually calculate if the error budgets are at risk, the burn rate and spikes of error budgets, and trigger the appropriate automation? You know, in some cases, you might want to um, you know, page the team to wake up. In other cases, you might want to do SLO-based auto-scaling or rollback or feature flagging. Um, in other cases, you might want to just Slack the team or send an email. So all of those different use cases should be defined and implemented in a real system uh, as part of the implementation phase. Once we finish implementation, we got to operate the service. And I want to, if there's one thing to take away from this, it's that observability without action is just storage. And what we want to do is not just observe the system, but really take action. Um, and this is what SLOs are all about. The operate phase starts by taking action on at-risk SLOs. We want to respond to error budget violations as, uh, appropriately at the right level and make sure that the team is set up to take action, in some cases through automation, in other cases through pages, in other cases through Slack messages. But we want to take action no matter what the, uh, what the SLO is. We want to make sure that we ensure the data is clean. We want to check the data regularly and ensure that we have uh, no gaps and that it's telling us what we think it's telling us. We want to fine tune our SLOs as well. We want to make sure that we're not just uh, trusting that the SLO we defined at some point is right. We want to explicitly come back and adjust them. In some cases, we may want to split an SLO out into two, two different user populations or add additional thresholds so we can have um, different types of actions. This is an important part about operating using this SLO based methodology. And then finally, we want to make sure that we see if SLOs are degrading that we compare that to business impact and other signals. We want to correlate our SLO data to business reality so we can either loosen the SLO, give ourselves more degrees of freedom if it's not really impacting business. Uh, and on the other hand, if we're seeing that you know outages or, or downtime or slowdowns in the system are having business impact, refocus our energy on reliability and put features on hold. This is the, the keys to operating a, uh, a service using the SLO-based methodology. We also created a periodic review worksheet, and this is an important part of uh, managing SLOs. Um, so check this out on slowdlc.com. This is your uh, checklist and also gives you a place to track action items and decisions, uh, meeting notes, et cetera, uh, as part of that regular operational check. That's the slow DLC in a nutshell. I went through uh, this rather briefly, but hopefully you have something to get you started. Like I said, you can go to slowdlc.com and you can check out the handbook and other materials and learn how it all works. Um, Make sure you join the Slack uh, space if you're interested. It's in the SlowConf uh, monthly Slack, which you're probably already part of. Um, and it's uh, the channel's called SlowDLC. And we also are on GitHub. We accept uh, pull requests, issues, et cetera. We'd love to get your feedback. If you want to get involved in this, we'd love to talk to you and, and see how you can help. So thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy SlowConf. Mm -hmm.